Good morning, good morning. I'm going to try and go for a swim today. I'll probably just paddle about. David is cleaning. It's great when somebody does that because the platform gets very slimy. <laughs> These are my favourite flowers. These are meadowsweet. You can dye with them as well, actually. They smell incredible. And there's a load of um, river mint as well. This is mint just here. You should smell the place. It smells like, spear like spearmint. Beautiful. There's a lovely walk all the way along the river, which I must do at some point. So now. Thank you. Thank you to the committee. Thank you to the committee. Thank Thank committee. Thank Thank committee. Committee. <laughs> Surely. Swim last night. The committee. Was there a city swim last night? I didn't. See I managed to get out. I managed to swim out past just past the pier and then back. Normally I reach across to that tree, this tree here. But it's better than nothing, so that was fab. It is about half seven in the morning. It's good to get a little bit of sunshine, a little bit of cold water, and now I'm gonna go back and have a shower. Oh, just has just laid, hot, hot off the presses. <laughs> I'm at my mum's house, and my mum and dad's house, and they've just got new hens, so we're gonna... Still damp. <laughs> Look at her, it's so tiny. Aww. Look at them. Hello ladies. Lovely to meet you. This is ZZ Top's house. A little we paddock. Have one, two, three, four, we have five. Five eggs. Five eggs. Woohoo! Hello my babies. How are you? You fed? You found? Yes. Yes. Well, I think it's time Mr. Beans went outside. And Little Miss Toast had some playing around time. What do you think? Do you agree? No, yeah, stretchy. Stretchy bottom. I'm currently listening to this um, podcast called Case File. And it's this Australian guy. He's anonymous. Nobody knows who he is. Mysterious. But he's a fantastic storyteller. And um, he just puts together the true crime story really, really well. You know? So if you're into true crime... And now it, it's very graphic. That's the only thing. But uh, it's a fantastic podcast, audio podcast. Um, so I put on my speakers and I'm going to get, I'm going to do some cleaning. I'm going to do some putting away gently at standing height. <laughs> okay, so I was doing the washing and I came across this sock. This is one of James's socks and it's got a hole in it. Now, Jane, I've also noticed I didn't tie in any of the ends. But the hole didn't come from where the ends were. This is where, this is where the end of the two where I start the sock. <laughs> Terrible. I'm not going to bother about this. I'm just going to look at this hole just here. And I'm going to try, because I actually bought two years ago a darning mushroom. Never used it. So today I'm going to see if I can darn a sock. What do you think, Miss Toast? She's getting long. Look at her. Oh, yeah. Bit, a little bit of a chunk, huh? Good. It was too small. Mm. Cute. Right. So. <clears throat> um, so, it happened on the sole of the foot. Just right under... Where his toes are, really? Which is interesting. Toast is playing with the string now, yeah. because why not? I've also got a sock which I pretty much instantly wore a hole in when I was in Australia and I never fixed it, that's why I bought this. So I'm gonna try and fix that. What I might actually, what I could do is actually take out that heel completely and re-knit it because uh, the, 
the wool the, the the yarn that I used was like it was just way too soft for it not a proper sock yarn and that's why it wore out so quickly so I might end up doing that with that one but this one I can fix I've got some regia just plain white so I'm just going to use some of that to try and fix it here we go so I'm using this little um, Maker's Keep from Cocoa Knits that I got from a yarn story. Um, Maker's Keep. Uh, it's quite a cute little thing. It's a slap bracelet uh, just to keep my, my needle safe just so it doesn't go missing. This would be really good for like embroidery as well I'd say. You know it's kind of cute and it's a nice colour. So um, yeah I'm going to start off just with a little bit. I've no idea what I'm doing, I have to say. Full disclosure, not an abs, not an idea. So I'm just going to cut off a little bit of yarn. Okay. Open this down. The sock is clean. That's why I noticed it. It was in the clean pile. Okay. So it kind of spreads out the stitches there a little bit. And I suppose what I want to do is pick up stitches across the way and stitches down the way and stitches across the way. And I want to do a weaving. I want to weave it as opposed to re-knitting a patch. I think that's what I want to do. I could re-knit the patch because I could literally just pick up those stitches, but I fancy doing a bit of weaving instead. I really, I've always wanted to do Tom of Holland's fixing class, but uh, I was never able to get a, um, a shot at it. So, because uh, it was always really, really busy at Edinburgh. It was always sold out immediately. So, one day. <sighs> All right. Okay, so I've just kind of wrapped the stitches on either side and then kind of picked up the left leg of each stitch going across the way so I don't know we'll see what this looks like yeah okay so I've made my warp <laughs> and now I'm gonna try and do a weft across the way wish me luck okay so I'm gonna take this off the thing I feel like I might sh I this might look better on the inside of the sock and maybe I should have done it inside out but it's only a sock so um, I'm just going to see what it looks like on the inside. Okay. Yeah, I definitely should have done that on the inside, but I think it'll work, you know. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some reinforcing on the inside here. I mean, I could take it out and redo it, but... Not gonna do that. Cute! Uh, to be honest, James wears his socks inside out anyway, so it makes no difference. Okay, so I found another little hole. And I, ooh, that's pretty good actually. It was a smaller hole. And I, I, uh, I did a little weaving at the back. And we're just gonna have a little look. So this is where the a little, I think it was just a little stitch that gave way. Um, so I just did a little weaving and uh, it kind of looks like that. So this one looks like this on the outside and I know now that I should have done that on the inside but it's a little patch and I need to weave in all the ends for that. Ooh. There we go. Let me see what the inside looks like. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. And that's what it looks like on the inside. So that would have been better, obviously, on the outside. And then this other little weaving patch is just here. Just a small little one. So yeah, I feel accomplished. Um, I should really weave in the ends up here at least. I don't even know if there's another sock to this. I don't even know if James has lost the sock or what. Anyway. Okay, so 
I'm gonna I'm gonna just do another practice run on this heel even though I know the sock the the yarn base isn't a proper sock base so I'll, I'll just end up having to rip it out but it's good practice so this one is um, just on the edge of the heel where um, uh, that little double decrease thing has gone in I think I did a I think I did a I don't know actually but this looks like a um, afterthought heel so you can see that little center stitch going up there so we'll give this a go Okay, so let's. This is what it looks like now. It's kind of like a shell shape. Kind of came out like that. So. Oh, that's pretty good. So, this is what it looks on the outside. So, it's a little bit less noticeable. It's a little bit fluffy. Maybe I should have trimmed the stitches or something. I don't know. I'm happy with that though because I've I've trapped I I've trapped a lot of um the stitches all around. Um that should be okay. My gosh, I've got a wearable pair of socks left. I don't know where the other one is now, but these are these are a pair of socks that I knit from some yarn from a big box store that I bought in Perth. I can't remember what they were called now, but so oh my god, my my little my sockings, and this was some yarn that I bought in either Singapore or Bangkok, and I think it's more of a it had bamboo in the title, but I don't think it's actually bamboo. Uh, it was all in Thai, so I have no idea what it actually is, but it was grey. So a little bit of mending. Well, I've been meaning to do that for two and a half years <laughs> i'm making a really quick um kind of ramen-y soupy dish i've got some tofu from tesco they've got this organic tesco or organic cauldron tofu for like two euros and there's a load in it so i'm gonna fry off some of that um in some kind of seasoning and uh, then just throw a load of stuff into a frying pan with some water and some noodles and then lunch. That's my plan. I got some green beans from my mum's garden this morning. Um, so I'm going to fry those up with some onions and the tofu and a bit of, um, I've got some mushrooms as well and some spinach. We get spinach and um, a, a, a big veg box actually from this company. Uh, GreenEarthOrganics.ie and they're fab. They have a farm up in Galway and they're, they deliver like once a week or twice a week. Uh, once a week or however, however much you want. There's no limit. Um, I get the organic seasonal veg box irish veg only so nothing's shipped in so whatever is available in at the farm um we get a box for it it's about 21 euro and then i think there's an extra fee of like two euro delivery or something but they come and they drop it off they collect the boxes afterwards if we remember to leave them out they deliver to limerick and on saturdays so on saturdays every two weeks we get a big box box of veg this week we got loads of potatoes, um, loads of spinach, kale, mushrooms. Um, what else did we get? We got some spring onions. I think the leeks have just finished off. So yeah, so loads and loads of green leafy veg, which is my favorite. So I'm thinking of actually going up to once a week. Uh, so every once a week instead of every two weeks because I go through all that I go through mushrooms and green leafy veg like in no time whatsoever so that's fabulous so I love this company if you're looking into um getting more uh local 
kind of seasonal veg seasonal vegetables um, I'd look into one of these boxes because a lot of them do they support the you're supporting the farms directly and a lot of them do zero plastic so if you're going into Tesco or your local Walmart or whatever and you're looking for you know <sighs> salad and say they don't like and everything is wrapped in about three times plastic this um, they come wrapped in these organic compostable plastics so compostable bags earth to earth so it's water resistant and heat resistant but uh, it's council approved so I can put it into my um, organic waste bin and it'll decompose and it, it actually does after about two weeks if I left the cabbage in there it starts to kind of decompose which is perfect because I shouldn't be having salad in there for two weeks but I do sometimes ah. so yeah just if you're interested, GMO free, organic, fresh, chemical free, all the good things. Yummy. I suppose I haven't really told you why, um, what inspired me to do these July vlogs. 100% jewels from So Sweet Violet. She, I saw her putting them up and I was like, oh. and she, well, she has very beautiful editing style and lovely music. I'm going to go on the hunt for some nice music. If you've got any recommendations for, um, kind of um, free Google Music that you like, your favourites, if you have a favourite. Say if there's other podcasters watching, um, do give me a shout. Of course, I don't want to take your nice favourite one. Of course not, but yeah. Um, yeah, I just I just love Jules because she has, um, she's just so chill. And I was listening to her first one there and she was just saying that how, how much she enjoys um, watching like daily lives of people that are quite similar to her so I thought do you know what I've got two kittens I mean the people have got to see the kittens and I did find when I was doing the vlogs for vlogmas for December I just I just cranked out way more projects. I got really inspired. I got loads done and it was really exciting time. So here's hoping for that. Uh, now, because Jules has gone for a lovely walk in the woods, I'm gonna have to go for a walk in the woods. Do you wanna come? <laughs> so, oh my gosh, let me just clean you up there. That's a bit better, kind of. <laughs> so I'm just at a small little park bit which is quite close to my house and I got this funny uh, voicemail and it was from 
a lady who runs the craft section at the Tullamore Show. Now, for people who don't know, people who aren't Irish, Tullamore Show is the biggest one day kind of agricultural show in Ireland. Normally, it's, it'll be like craft fairs or country fairs and things like that. But this is huge. It's a huge thing. Um, so uh, one of the girls that I know, she's come to my retreats and she's a spinner and she's really gotten into weaving. She's not so much a knitter, but she owns sheep and she's a sheep farmer. So she's just fascinated in the whole sheepy, sheepiness of it. Um, so her mother is part of the committee. So as part of the guild, we've been invited to go and demonstrate in the crafts tent, in the craft and needlework tent, which is really exciting. <laughs> so it's, um, I was just talking to the woman who organizes it. And yeah, so if anyone is interested, if anyone is coming to our, or well, if anyone is, uh, is, is thinking of going to the Tullamore show anyway, and they spin or they weave, or they'd like to come and demonstrate drop spindling or whatever, um, do get in contact with me and maybe we could get a ticket for you to come in and you could do an hour or two. It's a big show so it'll be nice to get a few of us to be kind of off and on and then we can also get a chance to go around and see the rest of the show as well because it's always fun. Um, I was talking as well. I don't know if anybody, I've seen this on Insta Instagram that people like enter in skeins or knitted objects or um, kind of craft work for judging to like win an award for best skein or best whatever. Um, and I was just talking to her and they don't really have a class for hand spun yet. So we might be working on that for next year. Would, it, would anybody be interested? I think it would be really interesting to kind of raise the profile of uh, hand spinning in Ireland. A little bit. I think there's a lot of stuff for crochet and knitting and I don't know if they've got weaving. I'll have to have a look at their website. So that's really exciting. And I haven't done this long walk in ages and I'm feeling good. I've got um, one of these ba heated back strap things on it and uh, the motorway is like just there which isn't super great, but I'm still surrounded by green. It's such beautiful sunshine. So getting a bit of that vitamin D. Most of the Northern Hemisphere is really lacking in vitamin D, so. Hey. This double-edged sword of burning your skin off or dying of rick at night. And, well, or suffering from a vitamin D deficiency. There's something so wonderful about the sunshine. God, it's lovely. Kittens on a cherry. They sleep just beside each other. This one here and that one over there. I promise they do. And you're so cute. Mm, stretchy. Stretchy. Now, I think it's time for a cup of tea. I brought back some little flowers, but I know they're going to die in a second. So cute. So we'll go in there for 10 seconds. Beautiful. Stunning. I should design flowers. Um, so I'm just heading to um, Knit Night. It's Wednesday, the first Wednesday of the month. So, uh, and the car is roasting. Oh, that heat. Oh my God, it's a lovely day. I'm wearing my um, Sojourner and mismatching runners because I ain't got time for any other nonsense. So I probably won't stay very long at midnight, but it's nice to get out though and see people. Oh, lovely, lovely night at midnight. I'm tired now though. 
I met <clears throat> I met one of the girls, Martina, who runs the website knitanything.com and um, she had a stand at Woolen and I didn't realise that she was from Limerick until she came over to me and she was like, I heard you're from Limerick and I was like, oh my God. So we had a lovely chat about Woolen and her platform. It's a really interesting platform where you basically, you pick out your favorite designs and you design your sweater. Like you pick out like if you want a V-neck or there's loads of different patterns on there, but like say sweater, you pick out if it's a V-neck, a boat neck, or whatever. And then you put in your, your, um, your measurements and then the program actually uh, makes the makes up a passion for you writes up a passion for you um, it's called knitanything.com and I think you get like the first 10 patterns for free or something if you sign up I can't remember exactly but she's lovely lovely woman and um, yeah so now I'm going to go home edit the video and fall straight to sleep James is asleep early because he's got to go to Dublin tomorrow so I'll see you all tomorrow and we did a load today, so well done. Well done us. I am shattered.